Now let's move into our pseudo. Let's move into pseudo. Let's move into pseudo. Now, for our pseudo elements, for our pseudo selectors, there are a couple. There's there are quite a number, but I'm just going to focus on on what I feel you would use on a day-to-day -day basis. And the first one we would like to cover is the first one we would like to cover is the hover pseudo selector. The hover pseudo selector. Now, um, let's start with the P. Let's start with this one. So how do we put a pseudo selector? All we have to do is put a color and then the pseudo selector we want to use. So now this is hover. Let's start with hover. So, okay, so now let me do yes. Yeah. So let's duplicate this, copy and paste. So now if when we hover, I try to say that yes, I try to say apply these properties when we hover over these elements. That's what this is just trying to say. Apply these CSS properties when we hover over this element. So now we want initially it is um, let's remove this yellow and let's remove the okay so. So initially it's taking this background color aqua but now we're trying to say okay when we hover over it let's remove this one too since we don't need it let's make it should we say bisque? let's use bisk again so what we're trying to say is apply the background color bisk when we hover over p so if we refresh as you can see we got that yeah that's for cover the next i would like us to look on is active so usually you would use this on a button so let's just bring in a button and then we say click so if you look at what a default button looks like, it looks like this, it's just, ugh. but then let's say when we actively click on it, you want it to have a particular styling. Right now, when I click on it, you can see it has this very light gray background about it, but, and we can decide that, okay, we want to change that to visually indicate to users that they are clicking on it. So what we could do, is bringing the button since there's just one button and then we would say on active survey on active make the background color blue and it doesn't uh, yeah and maybe color should be white so if you actively clicking on it you can see that's what happens when you actively click on it yeah the next pseudo element I would like to talk about is focus so re remember um, when we talked about input we said if we could give it an autofocus attribute but let's say you want it to have a different look and feel when it is in focus that's when we could apply the pseudo element so let's bring in an input tag um we don't need to do any other thing to it so the input i'll just say input then of course on focus and then i want the background color I'm sure you guys have heard background colors so much. So by default, uh, let me see. let me um, let me comment that out for now and see. All right. Now by default, when this the input is in focus, you could see. Uh, it just looks like that the background is white or I think it's transparent or I think it's white 
Yeah. Now, what I want to do is when I put it in focus, I want it to be blue or aqua. So as you can see, it is aqua. That's for focus. The next pseudo element I would like to talk about is the first child. The first child. Now let's deal with with the, um, this li that is the first child of this one. So how does this work? This is how it works. Now listen closely. You pick an element that you think is the first child. That's what how it is. You pick an element that you think that it's not you think that is the first child, and then you put the pseudo class in front of it. So in this situation, you can see there are different LIs. This LI is the first child. This LI is a first child. So what we're trying to say is if we want to style this LI and this LI, then we would just say LI first child. Okay, no, no, no. Let's not let's not let's not do that. Let's say UL. So we say UL. And then we would say UL first child, and then we'll do this. So what this is trying to say is that target any LI that is the first child of the UL. So it's saying target any LI that is the first child of this UL. So now if we say background color, this, and we save and we refresh, you could see that this to have the bisque. Let me so let me repeat again. You have to put this first child. It will only affect an LI that is the first child. If for example, if you do this and you refresh, you could see it targets it because this LI is what the first child. So putting the UL in front, it's much more specific. Yeah. <clears throat> um, next, we want to talk about the last child. So in the same vein, we are just going to duplicate this. And then <clears throat> we'll change the first to last. I want this to be. Let me just rem let me remove this. That is. Uh -huh. So as you can see now, it comes here. So you say, okay, is there an li that is the last child? Okay, yes, there is an li that is the last child of the U L. So you can remove this to if you don't want it to be so specific. So you can see, this li is the last child. Now, if you want to also target one that is the only child, let's, so let's just create something. <clears throat> let's create an OL instead of, an, of a UL. So let's say OL, and then we say LI, only child. <sighs> the only child. So special. So now this is the only child right oh as you can see too the only child is also the last child in this situation uh-huh i'm sorry if we put this then put this ul so that it is much more specific yeah mm -hmm. all right now we want to target this this is the only child so all we have to just see is any li as an only child so this time we want to now apply let's say background color yellow so that it just the page just becomes bright so as you can see this is the only child that's the reason why it is being highlighted because it is the only child of this OL if you want to also make it much more specific just put the OL 
and it would work. So if you want to test that out, and you could create another OL and maybe make this the say first and then let's just copy and paste this one here it doesn't matter so because it doesn't apply here but the moment we remove it it gets applied. So that's for only child. So you begin to wonder, okay, there is first child, there is last child, there is only child. What about the children in the middle? Well, we're always focusing on the first and the last child. You second ones and third ones. You no, know, you guys are just there. But <laughs> anyway, there is provision for any other type of child that you have. So let's say you want to, so it brings us to nth child, to nth child. Now we have, to, let's be, okay, we will have to look at this carefully because some people may get confused about it. So now we have an LI that is the last child, that is the only child. Let's remove all this so there is no property there. Now we want to target um let's give id of let's say choir and we know how to target the first child that is an li remember and the second child as always make sure that it's in that position you can just see it's the li has to be in that best position if it's not it's not it's nothing like op and then you do joy, then you now say, oh, this li, that is, no, that's not what it's saying. Because if you do this and you come back here and you do ul um, li first child and you say background color aqua. Oh, okay. No, let's change this to the choir. My bad. Let's do, let's change it to choir. Okay, in fact, that even ex in fact that even explains what I'm trying to say. So as you can see, this li is in the first is a first child. Let me undo what I did before. This li is the first child in this list, so that's why it applied here. Unlike this one, this despite the fact that it is the first in line of these li's, it is not the first child. It is the second child. It is the second child to this element, despite the fact that it is the first Li. That's what I want to point out. It has to be, this Li has to be the first child before this property would apply. All right? Okay, good. So now let's go back to nth child. So instead of first, we do this. Let's say nth child now. You want to target now, this is no longer the first child. You now want to target it because it's the second child. So you first have to make sure that this LI is a second child, right? And then you say, okay, nth child number two. So this LI has to be a second child of its parent before this property will apply to it. So this is just trying to say is find an LI that is a second child of this UL. Or we could just see UL has different children and LI is one of them. Apply this to, you know, the LI that is a second child. That is the second child. It's not the li that that I mean, it's not this one. That's what you're saying. You say look for a second child. Okay, this first child, this second child, this third child, this is the fourth child, this is the fifth child. So okay, look for a second child that is that is an li. That's what it's saying. It's we refresh. Okay, I don't want it to add less like yellow. So it's different from what we have. So as you can see, this is yellow. 
because it is the second child. So if we wanted to target this P, we would do, let's just re du duplicate this, uh, okay. And then we'll just say P, of course, then we'll say first child. So this will also be a, all right. I hope you've gotten the gist of first child, last child, only child, and F child. All right, and with that, these there are other pseudo selectors, but day to day, uh, most of the time, these are the selectors you would apply: hover, active, focus, first child, last child, only child, and nth child. And yeah, you could check out other selectors and try it out on your own. Okay. Now, next we're going to talk about fonts and family weight, all those kind of properties that applies to text. Yeah, let's get there.